This screencast is going to cover analyzing transactions. First we want to talk about the accounting equation. We're going to uh, have this introduced in Chapter 1 and use it in subsequent chapters, so it's a really important concept to thoroughly understand. The accounting equation is made up of assets minus liabilities plus equity. Assets are things we own, and again we're talking about this from the business's standpoint. Examples of some assets might be things like cash, accounts receivable where we sold um, items on credit to customers and they have to pay us in the future. We might also have equipment, another example of an asset. Liabilities are things that we owe as a business. Some examples might be accounts payable where we made sale, we purchased items on credit and we're going to pay them at a future standpoint or at a future point in time. We might also have a loan from the bank that we owe to the bank and we have to pay off over time. The last part of this accounting equation is equity. And equity is basically what's left after the bills are paid. That's what the owner gets to use for their living expenses and to reinvest in the business. You'll also see in your reading and in the course materials that we have an expanded accounting equation for equity. So equity is actually made up of four components. The first of which is owner's capital. That is the owner's net investment in the business, what they've left in the business. Minus owner withdrawals, that's where the owner withdraws amounts out of the business to pay their own personal expenses. Plus revenue, and revenue is the income that we receive by conducting the business that we're in. If we had a t-shirt shop, we would sell t-shirts and receive revenue from the sale of those t-shirts. Last part is minus expenses. Expenses are costs that we incur in running our business. Some examples could be wages for employees, insurance expense, rent expense, uh, cost of the t-shirts. So there are a lot of different expenses we can have in our business. But this is the basic accounting equation that we're going to work with. So assets equals liabilities plus equity. In the accounting system that we're going to work with in this class and your subsequent accounting classes, we'll be using a double entry accounting system. What that means is for each financial transaction, it will affect two or more accounts. So we might have more accounts affected, we might have three or four, but we'll always at least have two. So that's good to keep in mind. You can't just record a financial transaction into our accounting system with one account. It doesn't work that way. It has to have at least two or more. Okay. So with these things in mind, I thought we would cover some steps to and go through some examples of analyzing transactions. You'll see these steps um, in chapter two and they'll also be expanded to a third and fourth step. I'm just going to go through the first couple steps for this illustration to keep things simple. So steps to analyzing transactions. And again, transactions are things that happen in a business. There are financial transactions that affect our accounting system and there are non-financial transactions. Let me differentiate just to give an example between the two. Um, a non-financial transaction might be that you have a prospect, you're a salesperson, you have a prospect that is interested in doing business with you at some time in the future. You go out and you visit the prospect and you have a good um, constructive meeting, but at this point in time, you know, you haven't agreed to do business together. So there is no financial transaction right now, but that's a business transaction. That's a, you know, a sales exploration sales prospect. An example of a financial transaction would be you go out and you visit the prospect and they decide to actually buy some t-shirts from you today. And so you actually write up the sales order, write up the invoice, and they actually make a payment to you for some of those t-shirts. That would be an example of a financial transaction. So what we're going to focus on in this class are financial transactions. Um, so back to the steps. The first step we want to identify the transaction, specifically the accounts affected and the account type. We need to know what we're working with. The second step we're going to look at is analyzing the transaction using the accounting equation. First we have to decide if each account identified in step one increases or decreases. And this is always from the business's perspective. Again, we're maintaining the accounting system for the business. The second part of the second step is to determine if the accounting equation is in balance. We can't leave 
a transaction until we make sure it's in balance. That's the cardinal rule of accounting. If you get out of balance, everything's messed up. So have to keep things in balance. As I mentioned, there are a couple more steps in chapter two. I'm going to um, not address those at this point in time. You'll see those in chapter two as we dive deeper into the accounting system. So let's walk through two typical financial transactions for a business and see how we would apply these steps to analyze the transactions. So transaction one, the owner contributes $500 cash and a computer valued at $700 to the business. Step one, we need to identify the account, accounts and the account types affected. So in this transaction, the owner is contributing $500 of cash, so cash is going to be affected and we know that cash is something the business owns, so it's, it's considered an asset. The second account affected by this transaction is computer equipment. The owner is contributing a computer valued at $700 to the business. Computer equipment is also something that the, the business owns and is considered to be an asset. The third account in this transaction is owner's capital. Again, this is the owner's investment in the company. This is considered to be an equity account, and we talked about that up here in the accounting equation. So we've identified the accounts, cash, computer equipment, owner's capital, and we've also identified the types of accounts. Cash and computer equipment are assets, and owner's capital is equity. Step two in this process we want to analyze the transaction. We want to decide if each account identified in step one increases or decreases and determine if the accounting equation is in balance. Okay. So again, always from the business's perspective, what's cash doing here? Cash is increasing $500 for the business. The owner is contributing this $500 to the business. So the business will have $500 more in their checking account. The computer equipment also increases $700. The business now has some computer equipment that they didn't have before. And my dog agrees. Owner's capital increases $1,200. So the owner has contributed some assets to the business. They're getting the benefit of $1,200 credit to their owner's capital account. Okay. So we, we identified our accounts up here. We've identified whether they increase or decrease. And next, we're going to apply these items to the accounting equation. So under assets, we're going to list the $500 increase in cash, the $700 increase in computer equipment, and the $1,200 increase to owner's equity. And are we in balance? Yes. We've got $1,200 on this side of the transaction, and we've got $1,200 increase on this side of the transaction. Okay. So that's how you analyze transactions, two basic steps. Let's look at another example. Purchase some equipment costing $1,000 on account. Step one, the accounts and account types affected. We have equipment, that's an asset. Again, that's something that the business owns. The second account is accounts payable. Remember, accounts payable is where you purchase items and you promise to pay at some point in the future. That's considered a liability. That's something the business owes. So those are the two accounts affected in this example. Step two, remember always from the business's perspective, equipment's increasing $1,000. We now have more equipment at our business than we had before. So in equipment increases. Accounts payable also increases $1,000 because now we owe more than we used to. Okay, so both of those accounts increased. So let's take this information that we have and come down here and apply it to the accounting equation to determine if we're in balance. So we've got a $1,000 increase under assets. We've got a $1,000 increase under liabilities. And there's nothing that's affected in equity in this transaction. That's fine. We just need to keep this equation in balance. And you can see that we are. Plus 1,000 over here, plus 1,000 over here. And we're in balance. I hope this has been helpful and we will cover additional screencasts in subsequent chapters. Thanks.